Hey everybody, Mike Hills with Triton Insurance Group in Tampa. Part of uh, the video series that we promised to deliver after Hurricane Irma came through. A lot of people had a lot of questions about what to do, what not to do, and uh, we promised to keep everybody more informed. Um, if you live in Florida, you are well aware now of what potential threat that a hurricane can bring to you, to your family. I think the heads got pulled out of the sand with Hurricane Irma, and it's like a dose of reality hit Florida, and I think people need to start thinking about having a little bit better plan about what to do and how to protect their family. I'm here with Claudia Fiola with East Lake Fire Rescue. She is the public education officer, and she kind of runs Station 57. If you could tell us like what kind of prep work or what did the station do prior to the hurricane approaching? What did okay. they do? So pretty much we had all of our firefighters on, on um, staff. Typically we have three different shifts. We have A, B, and C, but for the hurricane we made sure that every single staff member was here, present and ready to go. How many people would that be? Ballpark. Um, around 40. 40 people at each station? 40 people at each station? No, total. Or 40 people total? We have okay. three stations, around 40 employees. So what did they do with any equipment? How did they prepare equipment? Did they do anything different with the equipment? We, I mean, as always, we prepare our equipment no matter what, but we just made sure that we had extras of everything that we needed. Um, we prepared for the worst, pretty much. An interesting thing that we were just talking about was some people evacuated and some people stayed and sheltered in place. And I found out that Claudia evacuated and got out of Dodge. Tell us about what did you do and how did you get your family? Give us some of like the logistics about what went through you and your family. Right. So, I mean, it's kind of funny because we talk about preparing all the time, get your batteries, get your waters, and it's like you hear it, but you don't really listen to that advice. And this time it was one of those moments where you're like, I really wish I did have a better plan. Walmart, Publix, every single store ran out of water. Crazy. So no matter how much you wanted to get prepared last minute, there was no way... Um, you know, and being busy at work, personally, I wasn't able to do what I wish I could have. So by the end of it, we said, we don't have any water. We don't have any food. We're not prepared. We got to go. So, you know, get that. A bunch of people um, all in one car, dogs, pets, and every hotel is taken up. I mean, it's, crazy. it's a nightmare. Yep. It's a nightmare and it, it hits you in the face and you kind of learn from that, that when people say make a plan, you need to make a plan. A way ahead of advance, too. Right? Way ahead of advance. That's right. What, where did you go? We went to South Carolina. How long did it take to get there? It wasn't that bad. Traffic actually was one thing that was not an issue, strange enough, because all, all over the news it said there would be a lot of traffic, but we didn't witness a lot of that. Huh. So traffic was okay on the way and on the way back. When on the way back, we had issues, major issues with gas, trying to get back into town. We ran out of gas. Every gas station was empty. Scary. Yes, very scary. We actually waited in line for four hours to get some gas. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, so what would you do different I, next hurricane, next Cat 5 right. that's heading this way? You got five-day notice, six a week notice even. Even before, honestly, and I you know, preach this to everybody, when it's hurricane season, start then. You know, don't even wait for a name to come out or for a hurricane to come out. Get extra water. Get the extra things you need. Be prepared for it because once it's there, everything you need is gone. Was there much damage in Eastlake? which is in Palm Harbor, it's part Palm Harbor, Florida. Mm -hmm. Was there much damage? Was there any houses? Some were, some were. I mean, trees were the biggest issue that we had. You have, even just driving around on one of our major highways, US-19, you would see trees with all their roots just sticking out, um, debris all over the area. Um, so there were some floodings in, you know, different flooding zones. Some got it worse, some got less, and power was definitely a huge problem. So power was out? in the in, For some in, people. Yep, some people huh. went on, I think, for even about more than a week without power, so. Yeah, I had no power for five days. Yep. Uh -huh. I was lucky in that aspect. I came home and at least I had power, so. Wow. So, and this is my thought, is that during that hurricane, mm -hmm. when the winds are blowing at midnight, at one o'clock, mm -hmm. can you guys leave for a call? If I'm, somebody calls and mm -hmm. they need something. Right. And that's the biggest thing when we say if you're in an evacuation zone, go and leave if you're told to because we can't. Depending on the speed of the winds, our trucks just can't handle it. And the last thing we want is to get our crew out on the truck mm -hmm. and then, you know, and winds you can't are risk, too strong. You can't risk the equipment too. That's you right. can't risk wiping out the equipment. So 
Claudia, you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>